Hey, what's going on? It's Stranger for Off Center DJ School. We're back again for another serum tutorial. Today, we're going to walk you through on how I design pads. Pads are often played as longer notes and usually as chords, meaning multiple notes together at the same time. They bring depth and emotion to a track, and sometimes they tie all the elements in a track together. So it's a useful skill to have because then you have more control on how everything sounds. So let's dive right in and we'll get into some lush pads. Okay, so I have Serum popped up in here and with creating a pad, we're gonna utilize three oscillators. We're gonna use oscillator A, oscillator B, and a sub oscillator. We're gonna focus on one oscillator at a time, starting with A. Now I'm gonna click on the default menu here to select a wavetable. And for pads, you want something that sounds fat, that has a lot of timber. So I like the basic MG, but you're free to choose whatever sounds good to you. And then use the wavetable position knob to find the most optimal position to build your pad. Okay. okay, so I like it around there. I think it sounds very full at that position. Okay, so that's just a wavetable on its own without any modulation. Now again, with chords, we typically play more than one note at a time. So I'm gonna just create a MIDI clip here. And I'm gonna play an A minor ninth chord, which is an A, C, E, G, and B. So. I'm gonna stretch that out. Okay. So that's gonna make it easier while we program our pad. Okay, so the next step is I'm gonna increase the unison mode so that we're multiplying the oscillator A signal. So I'm gonna bring it up to six and then adjust the detune and find that sweet spot where it sounds the best. Okay, so I like it there. We're gonna leave the blending alone. We're gonna keep the unison mode all at the same volume. Now we're gonna look at oscillator B and basically we're looking for a second wave table to layer over oscillator A. Okay, so I'm gonna disable A and enable B here, okay? Now, the trick with oscillator B is we're looking for a waveform that complements A. So I typically like to either go into the digital waveforms or the spectral waveforms, something with a, with a lot of richness and timber, like the Monster 2 would work. Something like that. Lots of harmonics, it's very full. And again, we're gonna increase the unison mode. Bring it up to six and then adjust the detune knob until it sounds just right. Okay, so now we have oscillator A and B defined. Now I'm gonna re-enable oscillator A and let's hear how that sounds. Okay. Now that you have two oscillators, you have to adjust the volume of each so that they're, they're a little more balanced. And I'm finding oscillator A playing a lot louder than B. So I'm gonna adjust the level of A. I'll just bring it all the way down and then bring it back up. Maybe tweak oscillator B up a bit. Okay, that's sounding pretty good so far. And the third step is to enable the sub oscillator. And basically the sub oscillator is meant to play at an octave below the oscillator A and B wavetables. The idea of it is to add a little more body or warmth to your pad. So I've enabled the sub oscillator and then there's a number of uh, waveforms that you can choose. I typically like the sawtooth. Okay. Now you have to bring the octave down. So you're gonna have to click here and bring it one octave down. Okay. Now adjust the level once again. 
Notice how there's more weight to your pad with the sub oscillator. I'm gonna turn it off and on. Right, so that's sounding much better now, much more full. Now the next step for pad is, since you're playing longer notes, you want to create movement as your note plays out. So one step to doing that is to apply an amplitude envelope to your pad. So we're going to adjust each one of these knobs, okay? Starting with the attack, okay? Now the attack is how long it takes when you initially press the key for it to reach the maximum volume, okay? Now this dot here adjusts the, the curve of your attack, okay? So we want a curve to move up like this, so... It sounds a bit smoother when your curve is convex. Okay, and now we're gonna adjust the hold time. And that's just how long the maximum volume will hold while you're holding the key, okay? Now the DK and sustain knob work together hand in hand. Simply is it's the volume that it eventually gets to while you're holding the key. So we're gonna bring down the sustain level down and your DK is just how long it takes from your maximum volume to reach the sustain volume while you're holding down the note. And lastly is your release. Your release is essentially how long it takes when you let go of your key for uh, the volume to eventually dissipate. Okay, so sometimes for pads we want a longer release so that the, the notes blend with each other. So I'm gonna increase my release. Okay, and now let's listen how it sounds. Now what it'll help is if I add a second chord progression in my pad, so you can hear the difference when, it's, when it plays a different note. Now notice when the note ended, it's still playing, there's, there's a release, okay? Okay. Okay, one more step to add movement to your pad is to then apply some filter modulation. So I'm going to enable my filter and by default only oscillator A is being passed through the filter. So we also have to enable B by clicking on the B button here and then S for the sub. So now all three oscillators are passing through the filter. Okay. Now I'm going to change it to low pass 24, which I think sounds the fattest, and I'm gonna add a bit of drive and fatness. Okay, it's getting closer. So next step is we're gonna apply the exact same envelope to my cutoff. So I'm gonna click on envelope one and drag it over to cutoff, okay? Now I'm gonna click on this horseshoe icon and click and drag down and that adjusts the maximum modulation amount for your filter cutoff. Now I'm gonna adjust the starting cutoff position just a tiny bit. Now it's looking like my decay is decaying a bit too sharply. So let's let's adjust the slope of this decay. Okay, that's sounding much better. So now we can move on to adding some effects to your pad. So I'm gonna click on effects here and then I'm gonna enable the hyperdimension, which adds more wideness and depth to your sound, just like the unison mode by multiplying the signal. And 
and I'm just adjusting the dry wet of the hyper dimension. Now I tend to add reverb to my pads and that gives it more a bigger sound. I'm going to increase the size of my reverb so it sounds like it's pl being played in a very big room, like a cathedral. Now sometimes people like adding a phaser to your pad to add more movement. Okay, so we have a pretty nice sounding pad now and I got a beat here. So let's hear how it sounds over the beat. All right, so we went through some basics on designing a pad and if you really master these basics, then you're on your way to creating some really lush sounds. So keep at it and we'll catch you on the other side.